live. Welcome back. This is part two of our series on podcasting. Today's topic is podcast topics, subject matter that tests well with the core demographic that listens to podcasts a little or a lot. And I'm joined with our head of uh, research analysis, Lee Jacobs, again, to dive into that topic. Before we go there, I just want to um, kind of telegraph what we're going to do. We're going to actually show you the results of two different studies today, one of which is one we've been talking about here, which is a more recently completed uh, study. And then what we did a few months ago that's more purely targeted at podcast listeners that allows us to do a slightly deeper dive. Lee, you'll explain the methodology. I'd start out by saying that... Uh, uh, I, a little review from the slide from our more recent data set that, again, my premise here is that one of the issues we're going to see as we look at podcast topics and what tests where and how much people are into this versus maybe wanting something better if it were to come along is that we're largely seeing the growth of podcasting in one particular cell that's been true for a while, right? Millennial men. It's the only uh, place where we saw year over year growth in terms of overall all use. So maybe study, uh, remind us of the methodology of this study. And when we get to it, uh, the study that we're going to refer from a few months ago. Sure. Nationwide here, uh, over 5,000, 14 to 54s. We stopped at age 54. So not all of Gen Z is within this study, but most of it. I think Gen Z goes up to 57 or so these days. Um, stopped at age 54 here. So you see that within this sample, asked if to compare their listening uh, to podcasts year over year, only men and millennials say they're listening more in the aggregate. Overall, you know, we saw 30% saying they're listening more against 29 less, but men 26 to 33 say more, 23 to 35 say more. There's significant momentum within that demographic, which I would posit is kind of the epicenter of podcasting uh, being the place where the technology has been easy to deal with for the longest, the, the population that's most likely to play, do the extra thing to get their podcast into their ears, uh, and an interest in spoken word programming, an interest in things that they can listen to other than music. That's right, because this was not purely uh, targeting podcast topic subject matter, as we're about to learn. It's also, I, th I think we delved into talk show topic subject right. matter as well. Yeah. Right. It was a really wide ranging study. In fact, this one, uh, this chart comes from an older study uh, from the latter half of 2022, the last few months. And we started out in, in orange here are, is the universe that we began with, because this was a deep dive into podcasting alone. And so it goes all the way up to 57 uh, last year to encompass all of Gen X. We had to stop at uh, 14 on the younger end. Couldn't get all of Gen Z to get below 14. I've got to get parental permission to do interviews. So we, we leave it at 14. And then in the gold color are those who qualified through. We started out with over 5,000 nationwide and ended up with just a little short of 1,700 nationwide who say they listen to podcasts at least an hour a week. But you'll notice the different shape demographically of those who listen to podcasts at least an hour a week. 36% of this uh, sample of weekly podcast listeners turn out to be millennial men. Yeah. And so Lee's theory is that this is the group of technology early adopters. They've used podcast back when podcasting was an iPod Kind of sure. only uh, you had to uh, download the the right. had to, yeah, iTunes had to sync. It was pretty complicated, and so right. my men are typically the technological early adopters, and so I, I I see that, but I also see now whether this is just a self fulfilling prophecy at that the millennial men because this is the audience for them. It's very likely that this is probably the plurality of the podcast producers that are serving the the, the topic niches. But as we, and now we're going to go back to, uh, I know we're kind of playing ping pong here, but we're going to go back to our more recent study mm -hmm. and now look at the scores. But I would just say, keep in mind what you're dealing with, whichever study we're looking at, it's millennial men that are populating most of the ratings that you're seeing here. Okay, sure. Uh, and here, the two columns are on the uh, on the left, the podcast listeners. Those are people who are listening to podcasts at least an hour a week. But then next to them, the podcast heavies. 
And those are the people who uh, describe themselves as listening to podcasts at least 10 hours a week. And they are human sponges. I mean, they're interested in all sorts of things. They are the people who can always find another 30 minutes or another 50 minutes to listen to another podcast. And they're interested in everything here. The smallest number, and these were 31 different topics that we uh, we inquired about. And it was a wide-ranging sample and a lot of different um, uh, question areas trying to accommodate uh, the interests of a lot of our clients, some of whom are in the broadcast radio space and many of whom are within the podcasting space and still others that I'll, I'll leave off for the moment. But we wanted to do double duty with this particular right. uh, uh, question group. So you'll see that among the podcast heavies, a little bit less interest in pop culture in this, but massive interest in all sorts of things, uh, places to travel, news, uh, family values, the economy, comedy, uh, overall against podcast listeners, music, which is tricky uh, as a podcast uh, subject because you get into the licensing issues if you well, have any yeah. music uh, to try to illustrate your points in a discussion. I'd argue, too, that most of what we're seeing, the hits are the hits, comedy, true crime, uh, travel and vacations, uh, staying healthy. Or I mean, we might be describing them slightly differently, but the hits are the hits here. Um, but at the bottom of the stack, this is still a more recent study, again, multimedia study that has podcaster, uh, podcast fans as part of a broader spectrum. Here we do see some skews some dichotomous readings between podcast regulars and heavies, mostly in the area of politics. Sure. Uh, and interestingly, podcasts where you live is a big interest. Uh, local community leaders talking about important issues has a much stronger interest among podcast heavies than the overall podcasting audience. And I'll, as sidebar, mention that, you know, radio stations, our media uh, partners uh, do that exact thing every week as part of their community outreach that they run typically buried sometime early, early Sunday mornings, but they have local community leaders talking about important issues. And that turns out to be a pretty in-demand, potentially in-demand podcast uh, that if they had the community leader being interviewed, promote that to their, uh, to their base, to their constituents, then that's an opportunity to promote a station and develop yet another vertical of listening. And at the bottom of this, I thought it was fascinating that uh, politics, 63% interest among the podcast heavies as opposed to 41% overall. And even lower are politics from a conservative perspective, 40 yeah. and 58, or a liberal perspective, a point lower than that at 39 or 56. The idea that it's straight down the middle and you as the listener, the person who gets to decide how you feel about it, not how the host feels about it going in turns out to be uh, an extra added chip. Yeah. I mean, you just basically you've, you've created the roadmap for radio stations that have most of their employees uh, doing sanctuple duty, no extra time to create a new initiative, but here's one kind of screaming at you. You have to do that public affairs show right. on Sunday morning as part of FCC compliance. Here's an opportunity to do something that people are actually interested in, repurpose it as a podcast and sell some sponsorship dollars. Okay. Let's fast forward, or should I say rewind, to our more uh, podcast-centric study, where we're going to share with you the same data, though we do describe the uh, the subject matter a little bit, but this is uh, this is squarely at a universe of people that we would describe as podcast regulars. Right. At here, we were thinking not so much you know, topics, but topic areas. We were thinking about established types of podcasts, right. uh, true crime, uh, comedy, self-help, managing money, pop culture, um, productivity, et cetera. Uh, the lowest testing of this group was scripted drama. Uh, shows up at 37%, which that's three in eight podcast listeners. I would say that's still truthfully a massive number. And if you had a great scripted dramatic podcast uh, with names that you know I as a listener know or actors that I care about or... Uh, you know, oh, Aaron Sorkin wrote this scripted dramatic podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. you could absolutely develop a market uh, for any of these. You know, with close to two and a half million podcasts available in the iTunes store and something like 40,000 new episodes uploaded every month at least, um, you know, I would be looking toward the bottom of this list because even a 37% passion score 
given probably the lack of relative competition here compared to true crime, true crime or comedy or self-help, it looks to me like there's maybe more of a there there. I think you're right. There would need to be uh, some star talent, though. Right. You'd have to have some reason that I, as a listener, go, oh, I, I should check that out. Why is it that I want to know? All right. So the elephant in the room for me is, again, whether it's that the plurality or to majority of podcast audience are um, millennial men or whether that just happens to be the epicenter of people producing podcasts. And so the interests are skewing in the direction of that demographic. Here we see what we refer to as a settling score. And mm -hmm. we've used this in media for decades. This is where we ask people, for, for, for example, fans of a radio station morning show, like a, one of those shock jock shows, uh, how well they tolerate the entertainment value. And if something better came along, how quickly or easily would they switch? And here, these are ostensibly settling scores for not specific podcasts, but topic areas, right? And they're telling us, for the most part, that there's, there's really not a lot of... Uh, there's not a lot of passion for the current choices that are out there. Well, there there's certainly some passion, yeah. but there are a whole lot of podcast listeners who, you know, want a scripted dramatic show, but there isn't one that they that's really ringing the bell for them that they're completely satisfied with. And I didn't get stuck with this overlay. I didn't produce separate numbers for it, but because my takeaway was look at the tremendous portion of any of these topic areas that isn't really completely filled by existing offerings right. or maybe it's filled by existing offerings, but there's the gap between sure. It's a great show, but nobody knows about it. It's a matter then of getting the word out. And I think you're very nice to say that you didn't prepare those slides. I in fact, didn't prepare those slides. Uh, and that's because I want to leave something, uh, something back. We try to keep these, uh, these little mini broadcasts to, 10 minutes to 15 minutes, but we can do a deep dive, right? And Lee, you're, you're available to do a deep dive into demographics, sure. into generations, into uh, uh, genders. Yep. So if you're an aspiring podcast producer looking to perhaps identify a hole, whether it's a nationwide hole across a vertical or whether it's a regional hole where you think there's an opportunity uh, to establish a beachhead, Lee can help you. And I or anybody on the marketing team can help you if you're a media buyer or somebody who's interested in kind of figuring out how to optimize the what collection of podcast categories might be optimal for your particular brand, you can reach out to me, Mike at NewVoodoo.com, and you are? Lee, L-E-I-G-H, at NewVoodoo.com. And thanks to all of you for watching. We'll see you again on the next New Voodoo Live. As of December 2022, there were nearly 2.4 million podcast titles and almost 60 million total episodes hosted by Apple Podcasts. The average podcast, however, gets only 27 listeners per episode. For anyone trying to monetize, that's like a tree falling in the woods that nobody hears. But New Voodoo helps podcasters cut through the jungle with research and marketing. We help find the right listeners and grow the audience fast. Learn more about podcast discovery. Contact Tell Me More at newvoodoo.com.